Everything's a relationship. It's all about that. And the hardest thing that we have as far as job is to teach other people um, how to view a dog so that they have the right perspective so they can make the right behavioral choices. Because their perspective and their belief system alters how they treat the dog, right? It alters their, their, their choices. Like let's say the dog barks at the door. Uh, but depending on what human is in the room, what happens directly after the dog barks at the door is going to be different. It's the type of person with a temperament that's going to just let everything go. Um, they're not probably ever going to be able to deal, deal with a difficult dog without undergoing a very extreme makeover of themselves. They'll have to like, probably have to lose some friends, quit some jobs, go on a few trips, really strengthen your character because you don't have what it takes to deal with a dog, let alone a rabbi, you know. So, or a corgi, you know. Uh, so the, the person's temperament is equally as important as the dog's temperament. Now, when we're working with somebody who doesn't have the right temperament, we have to give them they can't have it all, so we have to give them more structure, like rules, like, oh, when you're in the living room, the dog's on place. And it's like, that just really, and then when you're on the walk, the dog's on heel, they have to have more structure because they can't have the in-between time because they don't understand, uh, they probably don't understand the dog's behavior enough, but they don't have the temperament to, to really lead the thing. They need tools, they need rules, like when I say place, go on place, otherwise you get a zap. They need that. Yes. Now, if there's a really difficult dog, and he's like uh, super dominant and aggressive, and maybe a challenging case, Still not enough. Yeah. Too much room for error because they, they look at the person and say, I don't believe you, so they're so they're constantly gonna look for a way yeah. around. And and they're right. The animal, they don't they're not wrong. No. If they say I don't believe you, they're right. You can say you can handle the dog all you want, but the dog's saying you can't. Yeah. Right? Not you, so I'm looking at it, you can't handle this corgi. <laughs> but some people can't, and that's okay. She's not going to be able to handle these things like that. But you know what she can do? It's something that I can do. She can sit down and teach a kid how to read. Or she can sit down and, and teach a kid how to do something and, and be patient. And probably, probably be great at teaching them tricks and all that stuff. Sure. And that's a very necessary person within our community, within yes. a household and within a community. It's okay that I struggle sitting down and reading a book and teaching my kid. It's going to get, I can't, I don't have that. But when the time comes and it's like, we need to teach how to treat others, I'm that I can do. If you, you have to recognize it within yourself, I'm not talking to you, I'm talking to everybody. Am I like leader material for a dog? Or am I more just like nurturing? And it's fine, we need nurturers, you know? You can't, not everybody's this perfect, beautiful blend between nurture and, and assertiveness. You know, that's something you have to really shape your character. Some people are born with an edge to it. And some people had a childhood that, that leaned them towards the direction where they're able to kind of be confident in their own skin and, and understand how important respect is from an animal and other people, and they, they go for it. Not everybody has to be like that. So you just need to realize who you are. So if you have this dog and you can't actually handle the dog, you need to rely on the rules. And what happens when you step off the bed? This happens. You need to be super consistent. There can't be hiccups, you know? Because uh, as soon as the dog doesn't believe the system's in place anymore, it all hell breaks loose because there's not a human behind it that they respect. They respect the system. They respect this. And that's it. Um, so, I hope that's clear. Yeah. How do you get respect from a dog? Oh, doubt the dogs, not only our dogs, but every dog is different when there's a different living being in the room. Yeah. It, doesn't, okay. it doesn't matter if it's girl, boy, old, <laughs> yeah. young. There's another living thing, and that's like the biggest, like, excited, exciting okay. thing ever. It's it could be, a, it could be anything. Yeah. It's, it's alive. We're all. This is opportunities here. Yes. It's opportunities to shake things up. You know. So we have to go through and, and generalize to them, which she didn't get enough experience. Which is like, it doesn't matter what comes in the room; it's fine. Sure. So don't worry about it. And what she wanted about? It's fuck nuts. Okay. When you're in the training recession, you got to be quiet. She knows when to make noise. When I say break and we go, you can make noise. You can do a little bark. We let them be dogs. Okay, so, but that's it. Like, that's why. And the, the secret is, is that <laughs> if she whines, I'm going to tell her not to. Yes. If she continues, I'm going to take care of it with me. Yes. No. Like a dog would. A dog's not going to be like, hang on, let me go grab a stick and just beat you. He's yeah. just going to, boop, use what he got. Yeah. And, and so, but, but as we talked about, it's not, it's not as easy as just punishing a dog and all that. You've got to know how to yes. teach. <laughs> no, no, oh my God, no. And see, she's the one who I care about her opinion. Yeah. She knows I love her and, and everything. And I say, great, we're all good. And this is not even thinking about it. She understands that that's a rule that I don't like. And she also understands that it's totally normal for another living thing to control others yeah. in exchange for protection yes. and food. 
and comfort. You would not be alive if I threw you out there for a night. That eagle would grab you, honey, in a heartbeat. If you she wouldn't live. So, so if I say shut up, just be quiet. That's it. Yeah. I'll give you food. I'll give you all this stuff. To me, that's the fair exchange. Now, as far as it was paying all the bills, I would do whatever she said. I would pan, you know, get her. She looks hot. I'd comb her in the pack. There's always an omega, usually, and it has a purpose. And the purpose is, it's. Well, so everybody else's ego is above them. So if you have at least one dog that's below you, everybody else feels good. And the bottom does not feel good. But the Omega, that's their position, so they're, they're somewhat okay with it. Yeah. You know, but, but the thing is, is if they get corrected, it keeps everybody else in line. So this girl here, she is the Omega. She's the first one that dies. Yeah. It's just how it goes. So that the Omega is the opposite of the Alpha. They're the bottom position. If there's a top, there has to be a bottom. Otherwise, there is no top and there's no bottom and there's nothing and it's all that's all bullshit. Because the thing is, if, if we were locked in, if we if we were alone on an island and we, and we were we needed each other to survive, what would happen? It's not dominance. It's not who can kick his ass. It is that way for guys. We, I'd have to fight. <laughs> yeah, a little bit, but it's not really. You know what it really is? Is it's competence. Who can keep us alive? Mm -hmm. That's what it is. That's what it is. Who's going to keep the group alive? Yes. Who's the better hunter? Who's the better at protection? Who's the better at building a house? It's the middle of the roads that, that we can be re you can be replaced by anybody. They're the ones that there is a separation. If one of you go, we're fine. On a smaller scale, there's no difference between this owner and this owner. You see it in owners. You start to see in people what they can handle and what they can't handle. What's their position in a group of 10 people? Mm -hmm. yeah, Where is it? Very true. And if you're on close to the bottom, then you're not going to be easy to, to leave these because these are, these are pack members too. And they are not politically correct. They'll let you know if you can't handle it by by doing by not listening to you. <laughs> by not listening. Okay, so if are you leader material or not? That's what they need to identify. Do you want to be leader material? What do you you know all that stuff? So we're not trying to change people. We're trying to make them understand where they stand, and then if they want to change, they can. But I don't have the energy to beg people to change. No. So if we find that their owners can't handle them, let's say this is how, this is the example, what I mean, Gatsby. When you tell him what to do and he doesn't want to do it, he'll whine. Mm -hmm. A soft owner hears that whine and they are biologically just triggering to be nurturing. They can, not, everything in their body, because they're such a nurturing type of person, which is fine because you need that. I'm not a good mom. I would not be a good mom. <laughs> I'm not going to be. I don't have the patience to sit there and feed him all the time and all this stuff. Yeah. And I'm being honest. I'm just being honest. I love my kid, but something about that tells me, no, go kill something. Yeah. Like you need to go out and, and do something, then come back and spend some time with the family, yeah. then leave again. Everybody's built differently. So if you're built and you hear the whine, you go, aw, me, that's a good sign right there. That's a good sign that, and you start to break it down. And you say, well, maybe I won't make you sit then because you don't like it. That's a sign that you're not the material to leave a dog. Yeah. But if you hear the whine, you say, don't whine at me, sit. You might be able to do it. But that, don't lie to yourself. Who are you? You can change. I'm not saying people can't change. But who are you right now? As a person, and who is the dog? What's their temperament? Temperaments are real. We're not all the same. That's, otherwise, we wouldn't survive as a species. We need to be different. You know, I'm different than you, and you, and you, and you. I can leave this guy. He's a follower. This guy is middle of the pack, closer to the bottom. He's not at the bottom. Fully, because he's good at falling. He'll follow direction from the others. But he's not going to come up on Gatsby, and it's not size difference either. Gatsby yeah. is bigger, but it's not size yeah. difference. I mean, look, it's it's mentality. <laughs> it's mentality. Yeah. So they're not all supposed to be leaders. When they come out of the mom, that's terrible. When they come out, there's there's a variety of temperaments. And you, traditionally, you have the mom and maybe the dad if you're looking at wolves. But what we look at is what you looked at, which is stray dogs getting together. That's more of what we're going to experience because they're not usually related. These two are related, though. Yes. They all come out, and I think that nature, uh, what it does is it gives them all a variety so that they have structure within their pack so that they can survive. They need each other, right? And so they're not all going to be have the mentality of wanting to, to, to lead whatever that is in the brain or whatever, however that's made up. But you can see the disposition of the animal. His disposition is to follow something he trusts, yes. an animal he trusts. The disposition of Gatsby is to make the choices for the group. Mm -hmm. And that is there from the beginning. It's there for them. Now you can get false. You can get dogs who falsely think they're leadership material because they were put in a bubble. And those dogs are insecure and they break. When, as soon as a real living thing 
that actually shares with them real life consequences, like you're whining and, and like tugging on me with your teeth, so I'm gonna strike at you. As soon as they realize that you're capable of that, you see it all, it's all false. Yeah. They're just like, I don't know what to do, I thought I was top. Because what happens is people let them, they don't only let them do bad things, they actually reward them for bad things all the time. Even if, I don't even know if they're doing it on purpose or what, but the dog will be whining, they'll be petting them. And the dog will be whining, they'll feed them. Keep and so you're saying, keep doing, doing this dumb insane. shit that I don't like you to do. And so, it's aversive that stop that stuff, but aversive is abusive, right? So, this is the big problem, everybody knows it, you know, and nobody likes to stop that. So these guys live in reality. Even Sparkles, who loves me, and I just corrected her firmly for whining. She doesn't give a fuck. <laughs> she she's totally fine. is who I care about. <laughs> Look at her tail. She's, she's the most natural. These two are more natural than us. They think very naturally, and if it works, to give her a rule and then correct her for not following it, then I would say that's pretty natural. Right? What's not natural is to avoid, uh, if you want to have control over, over a pack of dogs, to avoid punishing them for, for breaking the rules for the better of the, of the group is the sure, fast way to ruin everything. They're, they're not going to listen, you know? That's why I have rules. Like when, when your dog came up on Ripley, I, I had to make sure that I could, when she's near me, because I she sees me as yeah. one of her leaders, totally. to tell everyone else to fuck off. Yeah. There's just little unspoken rules, right? So, but the dogs were very aware of them with each other. We were able to just change the way people thought about them. It would, be, it would make the world a difference. You know? It would make the world a difference. So, it's not fun to think the dogs the real way. It's not fun to think about the world the real way and realize what actually is reality versus what your programming is. You spend half your fucking day looking at a phone and then you go a little while without it and you're like, I fuck look at it. Just to know what I, what I should be, how I should be thinking about the world. So what I like about them, and what I like about the, the people that I supported that, had, uh, that were mentally challenged is that they were, right, they were as real as it gets. If he didn't like something I did, he's gonna spit in my face. <laughs> I can appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> I can appreciate it. You're like, yes. And I, yeah, we need a lot more. That's the point where you'd want to deep down to do that. Yeah. Stuff. And you're like, you don't give a but fuck. They just do it. <laughs> like the president could be in a room. Yeah. Yeah. He'll want my soda. So and true. if I don't get my soda, I'm going to tear up the place. <laughs> and that's how dogs are, too. Yeah, right? Exactly. And that's what nature is. What's, what's the separation? We talked about this yesterday. Separation, I believe, between what well, we're, we're separating ourselves. We're saying, well, I'm not that dog and I'm not that guy. I'm different. I know. I know we're the same. I know. No, we're not. I have a level, higher level of functioning, and I have consciousness. He does not have consciousness the way I do. He can't think about his thoughts and project them out to other dogs. He can't. He can't think about. He can't think about what he's going to do in a month. He can't think about a vacation next year. He does not have consciousness. He is as natural as it gets. Same with some of the guys that I supported. They weren't as conscious as we were, and that. It's just the fucking truth. So it goes. They weren't on that wavelength. They were just bumping into the day. They come down the stairs. This means breakfast. Where's my breakfast? Where's the fucking orange juice? Because that's what I have every day. I'm gonna have a behavior for the month. The orange juice. Then I go to the next room. This is what I do, and this is what I've been doing for 20 years. So I'm just on a pattern. I'm not sitting here thinking like, what is life all about? You know, I'm not thinking. So this worked with them as well. You come into their life. They mistreat you, you give them a consequence by saying, I don't want to be around you, and I know you like me, but I don't like the way you're treating me. All of a sudden, that aversive has an effect, and they realize, oh, my behavior has correlation to the reactions of others. Why would we rob that by them and be fake with them? Be fake with the dogs. The dog's doing something nobody likes. Neighbors don't like it. Strangers don't like it. Family members don't like it. You don't like it. But we're just going to go like this. <laughs> Good boy. And then we go, I don't know why he doesn't listen. Yeah. It must be his breed, or it must be his <laughs> genetics, and it must be this. And then all of a sudden he goes and gets plopped into a house with two humans that know what they're doing, and within a week he changes. Because the environment is different, which means the response to his behaviors are different, which shapes the behaviors he cho chooses. Right? If he chooses behavior A and B all the fucking time at home, and he comes here and he's like, here's behavior A and B. And we're like, don't do that, don't do that, don't do that in an effective way. All of a sudden he's like, I'll try C and D. And we're like, yeah, do C and D. I like that. That's cool. And then all of a sudden the dog forgets about doing A and B after, after his, his new association. He understands. He can do A and B. But this is what happens in current company. 
A being maybe barking out the window, B maybe fucking reacting to other dogs, whatever it is. Who's holding the leash and what happens within the next 10 to 30 seconds after the dog has done A or B, the thing you don't want them to do? What happens? Nothing. Well, maybe we'll try to feed it. Or maybe we'll try to pay. Maybe we'll try to. And maybe we'll try to that, is, that is Mother Nature right there. So you go look, at a, go look at wild animals and see, you know, it's just not the right behavioral choice on the human. So, they're, so the, the dog's doing a choice that we don't like. And then we're making a behavioral choice that just literally either keeps it neutral, which never does because they're self rewarding behaviors, they're, they're expressions, so they're reward, they don't need you to say good for it to get worse. They'll do it because it's fun. But on top of that, you're using a soft pitch tone saying, don't do that, which the dog just hears soft pitch tone means you're okay with what I'm doing. And then they do physical contact, but in a very gentle way, which means I'm okay with what you're doing. Right? Rather than, everybody knows, lower tone, firmer touch. Knock it off. Eye contact. What are you doing? Get them at the right age, at the right time, and you, you take that trajectory of this dog going down a bad and natural road, and you go, boom, and then shift right over to a better one. Early. Don't do it. Let's wait a year. Let's wait a year and a half. Let's wait two years. Let's wait ten years, and then get them into a training program. It's <laughs> <laughs> like a whole second. And they're like, I mean, is there anything we can do about this? And it's like, yeah. Yeah, we can, but a poor fucking dog, because he's going to make the mistakes more than... They are normal dogs, he's patterned. He's gonna be a little bit confused as to why now is everything changing. Even that too, they're like, shouldn't you told me this at like five months? Yeah, that's six true. months ago? How about I like how about the mom correcting the way I look at it is that when the mom starts to correct them is when we can start to correct them. So you see the mom starts to say, no, yeah, I'm like, oh I'm with her. It's it blows my mind when people bring a puppy home, they're like, I don't know how to stop the puppy biting, he's biting me super hard. I that's a correct. fantastic one. But that's it, that's it, and that's, that's all you need to talk about the puppy, puppy bite. Corrected. The puppy bites you, you don't like it, so instead of biting back, I'm going to tell other humans that I don't like it. Yeah. Why do you tell a dog you don't like it? In the moment. Yes. In the moment, you know what I mean? Like, which is what we have to do with dogs, because I can't be like, hey, you know, you did something this morning, and we're going to have to talk about it tonight. Yeah. Again, the consciousness, and depending on the individual that, that I work with, um, there's different there's, there, everybody's different as far as what they can understand. So some, some, some of them couldn't understand very well if they did something in the morning that there's a consequence at night. They had, very much like the dogs, did better if their consequence was immediate. If you called it out and marked it and said that behavior is not good, yes. here's what happens because you did that behavior. Yes. And then obviously we get out of the situation, we talk about it because they can handle, uh, you know, these particular individuals can handle a conversation to understand what you did, what caused it, and what to do next time. What's the alternative behavior? And then you have individuals who are still considered on the spectrum, but they are what they would call higher functioning, which they're able to correlate what I did last week and last month to what's happening right now. You know what I mean? But they're just barely on the spectrum where they, they're in a, like a house or a program, like barely, like barely. Any, any more functionality and they can't make it into the, you know, they're there too. 